Here we go, Samantha. Sam Shh, Samantha. Okay. Gosh. You know, you should really take notes after Madison. <sighs> She's a bitch. Madison's a cunt. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, I'm Ryan Wright. And I'm Samantha You're Madison Ashley Bell. <laughs> We're gonna check out from Twisted Tens. Um, oh, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, whatever, you guys know. Ten chilling Good photos job. with disturbing backstories. <laughs> so here we go. This is perfect. Halloween's coming up. Halloween. It's October. Let's enjoy. Twisted Tens is not a series of the faint of heart. It may scare or disturb you. The world is a very bizarre place. Nothing's off limits. If you decide to continue, we hope you enjoy As we know, from last episode, there's a story behind every photo. And while most of the time it's a pleasant story, sometimes not so much. I like how dramatic he is. Jeff Knight, is that the name? Yeah. That was like a full-on show. Rob Knight, that's his name. A class picture, a great time for students to express themselves, sometimes inappropriately. Columbine High School was your pretty average school in 1999, but also within that same year, it would go down in history as being a landmark for one of the worst tragedies America would come to know. In this class photo, almost like a warning, two students can be seen in the upper left-hand corner, sitting beside one another, appearing as if they're aiming imaginary guns at the camera. Oh. Though students have been known to do such things, this instance was far more morbid, as these two students, Eric Harris and Dylan oh. Klebold, would weeks later initiate a massacre in that very high school that would leave 15 people dead, including themselves. I'm from Colorado. Ugh. Imagine being kept prisoner by your own family. That's exactly what happened to Blanche Monnier. This photo was taken after she was discovered locked away in a room by her own family. Blanche wanted to marry a man that her family did not approve of, and when Blanche refused to see her mother's reasoning, she was locked away in a room for nearly 25 years. What? When she was found, she was surrounded by excrement, pieces of food, and other putrid waste. She weighed only 55 pounds. Though she was rescued, she never regained her sanity, and around 12 years after being released, she died in a psychiatric hospital. That wow. is so sad. That's really nice. The bombings of Hiroshima and pounds. Nagasaki were terrible events, and they left behind haunting reminders, one of which being the shadows. This photo displays the shadow of a person who was on this set of steps when one of the atomic bombs was detonated. The bright blast from the bomb would be blocked by a human body just long enough to leave a noticeable color difference as the blast bleached everything around the victim, leaving what are seen as permanent shadows of a person's final moment alive. <laughs> These are really bad. You just don't usually expect to find something creepy in a family photo. But what we find creepy and disturbing today wasn't all too uncommon at one time for family photos. This photo was taken of two parents with their daughter. Getting a person in clear focus wasn't easy back then as the cameras were much slower and required you to remain perfectly still for a period of time. Though the parents are a bit blurry, the daughter is clear as can be. That was because she didn't move at all. Because she had died earlier that day. In these times, it wasn't an odd idea to take photos with deceased loved ones before they were buried, making it appear as if they were still alive for one more photo opportunity. Jesus. That's so Parties are often held for celebrations or just generally to have a good time. The circumstances for this one, however, were inappropriate at best. This is a photo taken of two friends together. Tyler Hadley on the right was hosting the party where the photo was taken. Shortly after this photo was taken, Tyler began bragging about murdering his parents. Friends found this odd, but it was discovered that Tyler wasn't lying. He had beaten his parents to death with a hammer, 
and their bloodied bodies were laid out upstairs. Luckily, his friends tipped police, and Tyler was arrested. Space, space exploration is risky, especially with a low budget and in the 1960s. This is a photo taken of cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov, who was assigned to an Earth-orbiting mission by the Soviet Union. However, upon inspection of the craft he was to orbit the Earth in, Vladimir knew it was unsafe, with countless structural problems. He knew to go into space with it would mean certain death. Though he tried to tell others of this issue, the chain of command stopped very much short of where it needed to go to make adequate changes. The proper money and care just weren't in place. But Vladimir went aboard the craft anyway to spare a good friend who would have been his replacement from dying instead. Jesus. This is another photo of Vladimir after the shoddy spacecraft plummeted to Earth and scorched him alive. It was reported that as he was falling and burning, he cursed the ones who allowed the mission to go on for killing him. The picture has been slightly blurred, as the original is graphic, but easily found on a web search. Ugh. You got a web search, that shit. A person could go missing for a variety of reasons, and sometimes the clues left behind can be chilling. This is a photo of a teenage girl and a young boy which was found in a parking lot in Florida. Though the boy's identity isn't known, the girl is believed to be Tara Calico, who went missing while on a bike ride near her home in New Mexico. This is the last bit of possible evidence ever found in regards to what happened to Tara. If you would like to learn more about Tara's disappearance, as well as more haunting disappearances, you can click on screen now or go down into the description below for a link to my episode on unexplained disappearances. Hmm. Our next photo is a bit disturbing for two reasons. This is a photo of a young child in Sudan, starving to death. The photographer, Kevin Carter, was told not to touch or assist the children for fear of transmitting disease. As Kevin prepared to take the photo, a vulture landed in the background, a morbid sight as the vulture was waiting for its next meal to die. Kevin Carter's photograph won the Pulitzer Prize, and because of this and other memories of suffering, Kevin committed suicide three months later. Oh my god. Every now and again, death isn't just scary, it's breathtaking. This is a photo of Evelyn McHale, appearing as though she is resting, clutching her necklace, ankles crossed while she dreams, but the truth is, moments before, she stood at the 86th floor observation deck of the Empire State Building in New York City. She wrote a letter claiming that an unknown man was better off without her and that she wouldn't make a good wife for anybody. She jumped shortly thereafter and landed, as can be seen in the photo, on a limousine. Not much other than the tragedy is known about Evelyn's life. When drinking, it's important to be around people that you trust in an area that you're familiar with. The catacombs of Odessa in Ukraine are vast and complicated, a place where less than reputable groups converge. This photo was taken deep inside the catacombs. On the ground lies a dead girl who was with a group of people and had been drinking after New Year's festivities. She separated from the group and in her drunken stupor became lost. She wandered for three days in the seemingly endless, pitch-black tunnels, unable to see a thing or hear anything beyond her own panicked breath and sobs. The photo scene was taken two years after she died, and rescue teams were forced to go in and look for her. She died confused and alone. That's all for now. I hope that your photos oh, remain positive. However, that's not always up to you, now is it? Thanks. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next episode of Seriously Strange. Thanks. Wow. Why'd we end with that one? That's <laughs> the I best have, way. Like, this like pit in my stomach. Hey man, shit happens. The one that really bothered me was the second one, dude. With the woman who was imprisoned by her family for 25 years. That. 55 pounds. You are evil I, I thought it was an animation evening. what we were looking at at first it didn't like, look real no it didn't look real at all that was terrifying it totally makes sense she went to a psych ward 
Yeah, but never recovered. Oh, the family photo? Yeah, that's really creepy. Because I was literally, I was like, wow, her expression is so interesting. Like, I was trying to figure out what she's thinking. I can't believe people would do that back then. Like, take photos with their dead I guess kids. It, it makes sense, because, like, what if you, you hadn't really had a take picture photos. of them recently? Yeah. You know, today I have hundreds of photos of people I love on my phone. It's See, so easy. See, if I didn't like my kid and then he died, then I would take <laughs> funny photos. It would be like weekend at Bernie's with my kid. You know? <laughs> it's not true. The astronaut one was very admirable because he was the one saying, like, this shit's gonna go wrong. This is not gonna work. And then they were gonna send someone else and he's like, you know what? I am so aware that it's not gonna work out. This person probably doesn't know. I'm gonna go die for him instead. I don't want him to die and I Who can't was his him. friend, they said. Yeah, like he didn't want that living on his conscience, like knowing how someone would die and he was trying to warn everyone, but he'd rather have it be him than Just anyone else. Just messed up because you know hundreds of people probably knew. Yeah, ignored it. a lot of people probably knew. Yeah, it can't <sighs> just be this one guy who knew. That was weird. The unidentified boy and the girl. That is found in so a parking sad. garage. I have no idea how to respond if I found a photo like that. That's what I was saying. Like, what would you do if you just saw that? I feel like I take photos like that with Veronica, but we're just messing <laughs> around. It's weird how they, they're both looking at the camera. Yeah. They're the boy looks like he's eye. crying. I'm gonna move on from this photo. <laughs> it's like really bothering me. Oh, the the one of the kid. I've, oh, the one I've the heard about boy. that. That, yeah. that one is probably what I'm most disturbed of. I've heard several stories of that lately of someone who just witnesses something so traumatizing that they can't get it out of their head so they end up killing themselves. You know, like it didn't directly happen to them, but they were there to see something happen or they happened to come across a crime yeah, you scene. you hear about that like happening like after 9-11 or war mm -hmm. victims. It's, trauma just, it's, it's trauma. So it's like, you, I, it's like I can understand how, how you just can't get over it and you can't get it out of your head that you feel like the only way to do it is kill yourself or it just brings you down. Like, I, I'm not saying you should do it. I'm not supporting it. I'm just saying there's a part of me that can get the reasoning behind why they did it's it. It's just even so though, sad. Yeah. It's just really sad. That one was crazy with the woman that fell from the Empire State Building. She probably fell in that position. Yeah. Like she was just, she was like, I'm gonna perfectly land this. <laughs> like she, not, she looked beautiful. like she was like, all right, I'm gonna hit that car, but I'm gonna do it as if I was sleeping. And she <laughs> hit a limo of all things. She hit a limo and she did it in the perfect, like comfortable position. A high school where I grew up next to when I was in high school, all my friends were going to it and a kid jumped off the roof did at he, lunch hour. It was all over the news. And Did he live? No. And so many people were affected by it. Mm. There's a depressing This is a comedy channel. Oh, man. <laughs> what do you expect when you watch these videos? I don't know. I, I want to make fun of real life death, I guess. <laughs> One with the catacombs, that would freak me out for sure. I mean, that sucks. The body wasn't found until two years later. She wondered for three days they figured and out. darkness. How terrifying. Well, who were her friends? Bunch of... Dumbass bitches, apparently. You don't want to fucking you watch out for You don't leave your friends behind. When friends are drinking, no there's got to be left someone. left behind. You're supposed to watch the drunk friends. Oh, my gosh. That's what I do with They're Veronica three times a week. Mm. Every, three times a week, I'm watching Veronica while she's drinking, partying, flirting with guys, hitting on chicks, looking at porn. I'm watching her, though. I'm just making sure she's okay and safe. A healthy relationship. The key to Veronica and I, our relationship, is you gotta, you gotta be numb. Like my feelings don't matter, especially to her. Imagine like just steel you can't ever penetrate. That's the kind of wall you gotta build in front of your heart so that nothing ever gets through to your emotions. I feel like this is something we should talk about. Nope, not necessary. Veronica makes that with as many guys as she wants. If you guys are new to the channel, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Madison has a channel too, on Chicks Unhatched. Mm-hmm. Get ready to <laughs> Cut that line out. <laughs> I was like, um... <laughs>